Welcome back to Make It Custom, everybody. Today we've got a video on pre-stretch to control distortion when we're bead rolling a panel. So I've got Jerry here from Clark Design Works. He's building a wicked aluminum teardrop trailer, like fully crazy wicked aluminum teardrop trailer. You gotta check him out. And he's brought his back panel here. This is the rear hatch, correct? Yeah. So this is the rear hatch from his teardrop trailer. So it's hinged, he's got his license plate. This lifts up to open up the, uh, that's like the yeah, cabinets. The, the galley kitchen. The galley kitchen for his, uh, his trailer. This panel that he's got here is what we're gonna be bead rolling today. He's set out a bunch of different bead rolls. I guess this will be, the this is the license plate area. These are the two handles where you lift. So those are the two handles there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-stretch these areas with the English wheel. And the reason being is that when we're making that bead, it's gonna be pushing up on the metal and stretching it out. It needs, it needs a little bit of extra metal there so that we can get a nice bead without warping the panel. This is pretty thick stuff. I don't know if I've actually done this thick um, with that bead roller, but it's 060 aluminum, so we're gonna give it a shot. I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's get started. Only it's only metal. <laughs> Okay, so if you hop onto the other side there, we'll start with this bead. Uh, maybe kick kick that a little bit looser. Right. Yeah, there we go. We'll get the panel in here. We're gonna line it up great in the center. Yeah, right there. Add some pressure. So I'll steer going this way. You can just kind of hold up to it, and then uh, you can steer coming back this way. So directly on the line. We're trying to be nice and accurate here. Yeah, bring her on back. Oh, yeah, you're gonna have to, you're, you're steering. Yeah. You're steering. <laughs> you, you're, you're gonna push it too, I'm just holding on. There we go. It's really important just to keep it, keep it nice and centered. Okay, I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit more here. Go ahead. This is 060 aluminum, it's just about a sixteenth of an inch. See, did you feel that oil can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, now the metal's stretching out a little bit, we can actually feel it going dunk, dunk. Let's give her one more pass back towards me. Okay, and we'll unlock it here, and move to the next speed. Okay. If you're not used to steering an English wheel, it kind of, it's, it's a little bit weird. You get the hand-eye coordination to keep it nice and straight. You're doing really good though. Beautiful, now open her up. I don't know if Christina, if you can get really close there, hopefully people can see the bump that it's creating in that. If you walk over it with the camera, you can see how the light plays with that. There's a little bit of a bump where our stretch is happening. It's exactly what you wanna see when we're doing this. If you don't see anything happening, probably nothing's happening. <laughs> <laughs> you might, might have to tighten up the wheel. We're just about to pull this out of here. 
you can definitely see the little bumps that we've got in here. That's the stretch happening. The panel's definitely uh, got some stretch right on those beads. One thing I just want to say is that uh, you don't need special tools to do all this stuff. If you're attempting to do this, these things, I'm sure that you can build your own tools too. This English wheel is just a Harbor Freight English wheel that I've built a new frame for. That's what the dies are. They're all Harbor Freight. This adjuster, like this is just cut off of the cheap English wheel that you can buy. And then I just built a big frame. The main part about an English wheel is that you've got less deflection in your frame. So just a heavy duty frame and, and you got yourself a decent wheel. So we're gonna go over to the bead roller now. We're just gonna put the beads directly on these here. We're gonna step it up a couple of times. We're not gonna try and do this all at once. We're gonna probably do two steps, maybe three, depending on how it goes and see what we come up with. Right. One thing that I like to do with these dies, you'll notice that this, this width here is a little wider than this groove. And the reason being is that when this comes down there, it's gonna pinch a nice sharp line edge because it doesn't sink all the way to the bottom of that die. If I were to use this die, which some people would recommend for this lower, it's actually thinner. I personally don't like them as much because when this die sits into here, it doesn't have a final stop. It actually ends up um, pulling a lot of material. So this way it actually pinches the edges and gives it a sharp edge. Yeah. I just thought it was an interesting, weird build, so I thought I'd you know, try and do something. It's cool just to document stuff for yourself yeah. too, right? Like for your, for your future self. Yeah. Is somebody bleeding? There's blood there. No. Is that your marker? Oh, okay. oh it's your I marker. Red, red marker on it. <laughs> Sometimes there's, oh, blood, yeah. there's blood on my oh, stuff yes. and I'm like, oh, weird. <laughs> I didn't realize Absolutely. I was bleeding. Well, okay. not be the first or the last time I had blood on something. <laughs> What's it do? Yeah. You go like, well, it's tight and then one turn, or is that how it works? Yeah, I mean, um, you try and do the same amount. So like yeah, once, you, yeah, once it touches down, I usually do like one and a half, yeah. two turns maybe. Yeah, you always gotta count them the same. Yeah, this this it won't matter quite as much because it has a depth stop. Oh, Those yeah, dies are its own its own depth stop. So yeah, key here is just uh, if you can hold that edge up a, just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I, if I got that down enough. Give me a one half turn here. And same thing with the bead roller. This is uh, this is just the cheap bead roller, but we built a new frame for it, so it's got a deeper throat. Put a garage sale motor on it. It's worked fine for, for the last seven years. Honestly, man, I've never even tried a manual bead roller. I, I bought the manual bead roller and was like, this is not gonna work. There'd be, there'd be a, a serious amount of twisting and warpage if, uh, if we didn't pre-stretch these beads. Now, we've got these nice edges on the beads from pinching with that die. We've got these nice edges on the beads here. So now we gotta do something with the ends. The ends don't look very good. They're not finished. So we're gonna use a little tool that we made to finish those ends. just a hole punch. This is like a gasket punch. It would have been a, a full circle and it would have been sharp and you used to punch holes in gaskets. So what I've done is just ground half of it away so it's just a half moon. And that is what we're gonna use right on the end to finish those beads and give them a place to go. So use that, and grab you a hammer. You just do it on the table? Or you yeah, just right. or what? yeah, just right on the table. Cool. So just line up. Yeah, the two points. Just once or? Yeah, try and do it nice and accurate and one good smack. 
No, I think, I think that was pretty good. You could probably go maybe a little bit further in. And I, I put a little more pressure on this end, and they won't dig the okay. corner. Yeah, maybe a, a, a touch more. And a bit more. A little bit more on the backside. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, especially when you're the first time with all these, right? Keep leaning towards that side a little bit. You see, each time you hit that, it actually flattens the panel right at the end. Mm -hmm. it relieves some tension. Right on. I'll do a few. Somehow we're, sh we're sharing today. All right, sweet. Panel looks good. Let's pop it off and just have a look at it on the door frame. All right, everybody, thanks for watching Make It Custom. We're here with Jerry Clark from Clark Design Works. He's got a YouTube channel too where you can see this whole trailer build. It's, it's actually, without a doubt, the nicest teardrop trailer ever made. I'm not joking. He's going way too far. <laughs> but uh, yeah, everybody, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you learned something about pre-stretch and bead rolling. It is really important if you want to uh, try and control that distortion, especially on theater material like this. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, hit notifications. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks a lot, everybody.